Hi, hi everyone. Yeah, I'm all set up. I've been painting, painting yesterday, trying different things. Okay, um, I'm gonna start and the rest will, will catch up. So what are we going to do today? Uh, traditionally, um, there are two ways of painting eggs that, that are popular in Ukraine. One is um, a type called Wysanka, which is an egg with in an art in itself, when um, a really intricate uh, elements are drawn on a, mostly on an uh, eggshell. So you blow out the egg and on the shell you paint different tiny little elements um, and then you color it with different uh, dyes so that creates a really like a piece of art and uh, there is another um, way of uh, painting eggs which is Grashenka which is more popular with simple people and uh, everyone can do it you can just use um, onion skins or stuff you have at home natural dyes and mostly mostly it is onion skins um, and you just boil your eggs in this water, uh, in the soup of um, onion skins, and that creates a beautiful color. And those eggs uh, we call krashenka, and we just bring them to the church, uh, church on the Easter Sunday. So, what I usually do is a mix of two, uh, because what I create is an edible art. So you have some elements of. Um, um, I don't know, different symbols, uh, floral art, whatever you feel like drawing on your egg, whatever kind of symbols you want to use, and I don't know, um, yeah, your hopes for the next year and stuff like that. You just uh, draw them on the eggs, and um, yeah, then on the Easter day, you, we play this game when you beat each other with the egg, and um, yeah. That's funny stuff. So I will show you a little bit about um, uh, Puisankas. Uh, as you know, um, my family comes from two different regions. So my father is from the West. It's a mountain region in, uh, in Ukraine. And um, my mother is from the North, which is more forest, uh, covered with the forest uh, like um, areas. And uh, there are more fields, more bogs and stuff like that. So the two cultures are different and um, they bring different things into into my life and into the way we've been doing things and I've been exposed to those things. So even if you look at uh, Pisankas from different regions, you also can see how, I will show you now, if I can do that. Um, so for instance, these are, they are from the, uh, from the West, from where my father comes from. And you can see how intricate they are, how the elements are more related to their lives. They have a lot of uh, symbols that uh, correspond to pine trees, and they have goats, which is a, a, a mountain thing. You don't have goats and the sheep in the uh, in the flat regions in the north. So these are and these are the ones. I'll show you. Haha. <laughs> And these are the ones from from the north, and uh, they are different, right? Um, it's funny how how it is changing from region to region, and uh, these are all pisanka. And uh, if you look at to give you an idea, if you look at krashankas, so this is like a traditional setup for Easter. You will have an Easter um, kind of cake, which we call Pascha. And then you will have uh, colored in um, with onion skins uh, eggs, uh, which we call krashanka, and they are edible. So you will eat them during the whole week after Easter. Uh, they usually stay longer than just normal eggs. So what we will do today is a mix of the two, and uh, you've probably seen the pictures. Uh, okay, stop sharing. You've seen the pictures what I've shown before. Um, and um, yeah, I'm feeling really, really nervous, so don't worry about that. Uh, but judging by your likes and waves, I'm not doing horribly bad. Um, yes, so the first thing, I have a little plan here, what I'm going to talk about. 
So the first thing you have to do to prepare for the dyeing eggs, you need to make this onion skin soup, uh, which I already did. And um, the way I do stuff, you need to make it in advance and it has to be cold before, before you start uh, boiling your eggs, actually. It's like normal boiling egg stuff. Uh, so you have to cook that and uh, if you use a uh, red onion, the color will be deeper, more red, more brownish, orangey stuff. And if you just use the regular golden on onions, the color will be lighter. That also goes to eggs. If you use white eggs, you will have more contrast because the way you paint eggs with wax, you, the, the places that you cover with wax, they won't be dyed. So the rest of the egg will be, um, I don't know, red, or blue, whatever the color you choose. But what is underneath the wax will stay the color of the eggshell. So it's either brown or white if you have a white egg. So if you have a very weak um, dye from your onion skins, you can better use white eggs mm -hmm. and uh, then have a better contrast of your, of your drawings. And um, yeah, that's with the dye. Then we, I said about the eggs. And before you start painting on them with a the hot wax, you need to take them out of the fridge at least 30 minutes before you start because Otherwise, they, the difference in the temperature between the hot wax and cold egg it is going to yeah, not work very well because the wax will start uh, uh, I don't know, cooling down really fast so there won't be enough time for you to draw stuff. So that I said, uh, let's look at the tools. Traditionally, for Puisan guys, uh, we use this kind of tool. And it is kind of a tiny container with a tiny little hole here at the bottom. You put inside the wax, uh, beeswax usually, and um, it will come from, from underneath and then you draw like this. Yes. And you hit this thing in the flame of the candle and you draw whatever you like with this tiny little tool. It is, um, they, had, they differ in the size of this hole on the, on the bottom and you will either have like 0 0.5 millimeters or 0 0.2 millimeters. So really nice fine lines you can draw with that. Um, and yeah, as you've seen from those eggs, it's a really art and pr very precise technique to do the, all, those, all those drawings. So I got this a few, like two years ago, and um, before that, what we usually did, we used a match. A match just sharpened it a little bit on kati. Hey, you have to sharpen it a little bit on the edge with a knife, and then you roll a little bit of cotton on the top. And with this tip, you will be uh, painting. Um, then I also saw some things uh, that I'm, I think they came from Poland. In Poland they use um, a pin on top of, they have a special tool for, for it of course, but you can also use a pin in the, like on top of a pencil with a gum, you can just put it inside here, put an eraser in. And uh, yeah, you can use this tiny little pin to draw on the egg as well. And then you can use a bigger pin as well, like a normal uh, sewing kit, um, just, just a regular pin, regular size pin. And with this uh, you can also draw nice um, circles and make patterns with them. Um, yeah, it's very easy to use and uh, like everyone can do that. You can just find one now and, and have it. You don't have to buy an expensive tool or something. I also thought that one could use a cotton swab. A simple, disposable, um, you can try, um, that depends. You just have to, the secret is to figure out how, how to transfer the wax onto your egg with the tool. And that will take some time practicing. So yes, the tools we've seen, 
uh, let's talk wax. So I'm using, and uh, I think traditionally it's beeswax, of course. It is more elastic, it is more plastic, like, I mean, the it flows really nicely, um, it smells nice, and it's more sustainable and natural, especially given what we are doing, that we are going to eat this eggs. I would really recommend to use a natural wax. Uh, you can get one of those, like a natural candles, and just chop it in and um, have some. I have, um, I think this was a gift. Uh, I bought some candles from a local maker, and this was just like a nice bee that they included into the package. And uh, what uh, professional uh, people who uh, draw Gisankas, and um, I must say, not everyone does that. They're usually, at least in our village um, in the West, there were uh, like people who did that as, an, as a job. So they know how to do that. And uh, before, before Easter, people will come and order what kind of pisankas they wanted and for gifts. Um, I usually got uh, one for every Easter from my uh, mother and um, grand... Uh, no, how do you call it? Um, godmother. So she is a real artist and she's been doing that kind of uh, work. And um, yeah, so what they use is the tinted wax. And uh, I'm not sure if they add some kind, they probably do, but I also think that this might be just unfiltered uh, wax, actually not clean, not just, a, it, it's, it's really brown and um, they call it tinted, so probably they add something in here, but I also suspect that it could be just like unclean, normal wax. Well, I'm not sure. But yeah, so they use this dark one and uh, the, the, it's better because if you paint with it, you can see actually what you're painting much, much better. And um, yeah, it's the same, uh, it has the same qualities as normal wax. It's just, yeah, it's just easier to see, especially if you have to draw like tiny little thingies. Um, yes, what you can also do is uh, try to make your own tinted wax. You can, um, how do you call this? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> you can melt this one, uh, just a normal candle, and you can add some, I don't know, spices, um, like cinnamon, or I don't know, any spices that you have at home that will, will give a little bit of a brownish color. Or you can try with the food dyes. Um, what else? Um, I also saw some recommendations that you can use crayons instead of a wax, but given what we are doing, like it is okay if you are just painting on the on the shelves and you're not gonna eat this, that's okay. Crayons are a fine option, but if you are going to cook these eggs and eat them afterwards, I would recommend to not use crayons because we don't know what's really in there. So. That's another uh, option to have a bit of a tinted um, wax. Where are you going? Um, yeah. Okay, now let's talk about setup. So, um, there are different ways to do that. If you use a tool, uh, this tool I saw, actually, um, in Ukrainian, it's called Pisachok. I saw on Etsy, on Etsy, they sell it as a histka, and I suspect that's from other Eastern European languages. I don't know where exactly the name comes from, but by histka, you can Google and find it um, wherever you live, maybe it's available or shipment is available to you. So if you use this one, you can just put inside here the, the wax, and then you heat it on, on top of a candle and you are free to go. But if you don't use this one, you can do, uh, first you can use a, a real candle, just a tea light or a bigger candle. Um, tea light is probably easier because it's, uh, it's nice and round here and you can melt it, you can burn it for a while, then the, um, the wax here will melt. And if you're fast enough, if you have a setup, you can put it on a glass or somewhere. So if your setup is here, and you have your egg and you are fast enough 
you can use this wax to paint in here. So just like by moving really fast, that's possible. I tried that yesterday. Uh, what you can also do is use a glass or another kind of device. You can use a um, spoon. You can put your tea light in there. And you can use a spoon and melt your wax in there. You have to play here a little bit. You, you might need to level, level this one with something, you know. You, you might use a tape to fix this in here. The spoon so it doesn't fall in unexpectedly. And you might need to play with a glass to see the height, like um, how high it is uh, towards the light because it might start burning or it might not be hot enough. So you need to play with a, with the distance between your rocks and um, and the light, the fire, and um, yeah, that's another option. And uh, I tried it yesterday, but I think I'm I'm better off with the with just uh, like with a candle, just moving really fast. Also, there is an option to use just a candle. It has to be uh, a little bit like halfway done, at least in my case, and then you can use a small spoon on top of it. Uh, level it with something. That's a nice setup. And um, the, the only drawback here is that the candle will be burning really low because your, well, the oxygen cannot get in really. So you have to, you have to play here a little bit as well. So, but that's also an option. Um, what else? I think these are the, these are the main options that I could find. I saw there are some. Um, uh, I saw also on Instagram someone suggested that you can bend your spoon and put it somehow also, oh, how was it? It was like in between two glasses, you bend the spoon, you put somehow the, and then you, you hold your, so it will be like this, and then you hold your spoon on top of a candle and then it will like heat it here. So. That, that can also be an option if you don't mind wasting a spoon or reusing it next year, that's also nice. So yeah, that's also a possible setup. With, um, yeah, I also saw, saw some options using an oil burner, if you don't mind um, washing it afterwards. So you can put the wax in, the, in where the oil should be and then it will heat it up. But you have to play with that. It it will all depend on how hot the wax gets and uh, if you can actually paint, um, be fast enough to paint with it if it's not hot enough. Um, yeah. So then you need to do. Uh, you have to be prepared. Um, you have to have an idea what you want to paint and. Uh, I know some people approach it like traditionally also because they are usually very strict. You have their rules how you do everything. So like all the elements are in tables and you know what they mean there. Yeah, it's very precise art and uh, I see it as more of an improvisation. So like a meditation and creative process. Um, so. I don't usually have a strict plan uh, of what I'm going to do. So if you take an egg, um, you can use a pencil to draw some shapes and uh, like make sections uh, in where you're gonna put the patterns or some elements. So that could be a nice preparation, especially if you if you worry that you can't make a straight line. You can prepare yourself your eggs with uh, some uh, sketching. Um, and also what I usually do, I look up some patterns or elements that I want to draw, like if I think fish, how do I, I'm not good with drawing, like 100%, um, no. So I usually go online and I look up some simple drawings, how you can do that, or maybe just a, what, a see pictures for inspirations. And then I do stuff like this, I just doodle things that I could possibly draw. and. Uh, yeah, and then it just, oops, and then it's just pure improvisation. Um, yes, let's move on. 
What did I say? Yes, I said everything. I have a little plan here. Um, so I will show you a little bit of what I did yesterday. I had some, I had some deers and some little crosses with with pines. And uh, which one? Which one do I have? I had a little bit of of this kind of things with rakes and um, and sun and little thingies here, like really old symbols. And then I had a bit of trees and florals. Um, yeah, I don't know how good it's gonna be. You never know how, how it's gonna look afterwards. But yeah, I just played with it. I made some flowers like this. Um, what else? What else did I do? I made a really nice deer here. Like this. I hope it's gonna be nice. Oh, we'll see. So the plan is, um, I will try a few things here now with um, with the pins and uh, and with a tool, so you see how it works. And then um, oh, it's already ten minutes. And then I will heat up. Uh, I will put them all in the uh, soup, and we will cook them. And I will take them out to see how they come up. So you will see the whole process. And uh, yeah, I will try to be fast because it seems like I'm taking forever to explain stuff. Um, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here is my bag. So I will I will probably use this one with the with the pins to do some it has to burn for a while now. I tried yesterday so this how the the pin works because you see the the wax is light so you don't can't really see but you can do some dots and, and with those dots you can um, you can make patterns like this you can make some ranges and um, nice beading kind of thing and um, uh, with a tiny one where is it yeah it's also here with a tiny pin you can do like oh can you see it really this this tiny little maybe you don't see this sorry but this tiny little thing is under the dots so they both work in their different ways i also want to try the the wooden thing also if you have um the candle will burn for a while so i have enough wax also if you have a electric um cooking top but not like the ceramic one i mean the one that is like a metal plate or if you have a gas stove you can use a tiny um, like a lid from a wine bottle with a metal one so there shouldn't be any plastic but only the lid you can put it on top of the of your heating uh, surface and put the wax inside and that's really nice that's actually how we did with my mom at home you can uh, melt the wax in there and then just um, stand there and paint your eggs from exactly when 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 it's melting like on the heat so that's also a nice option um, if you have that kind of um, stove because I, I have this um, ceramic, like a glass kind of heating electric thing. Okay, so now it has to burn a little bit. Then probably I will start with, with this one before. Hey, I will use the dark one so you could see. Can you see? Or shall I, shall I move you closer? No idea. So you heat up the thing, and then with a the hot one, it's really easy to take in some wax. And I forgot a very important thing, which is it? A <laughs> towel. Because everything is good. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. It's probably um, better if you go to YouTube and see the, the proper video because I don't think you will see anything very exciting here now. But you will get an idea, I think. So 
Some people do it like a holding tag like this and others just put it on the table and then it's easier to using their pinky to hold the to get a good grip. There is a clog in here. Oh. Damn it. With this tool actually comes a tiny little thingy that will help. Like a tiny wire that will help you clean the nostril if something gets stuck in there. Because um, especially with this tinted wax because I, I think it is not like clear there's some um, I don't know dust leftovers of the I don't know bees production I don't know how it's called but I, I think you get what you mean if you buy oh, I'm terrible I don't know the word um, if you buy honey uh, with um, with the holes where the honey was laid, you have this kind of stuff that it's um, not always melted. Well, don't listen to me. So this is how it looks. You just draw um, and then you see the, the patterns. I will do. I'll do really fast another one, um, and then maybe we will go to painting. To oh no, you wanted me to show me that. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I will try. I will try. I will try. Try this one. You won't be able to see it much because it is a light it is a dark egg and a light wax but it works and uh, i'm drawing some kind of flowers yeah you can see it so it works the match works and if you work with children probably cut the other side of the match so there are no Fire accidents. Um, yeah, let's try the pin. So the pin works the same way. You can just drop it in here and, and draw something. smaller pin is more difficult to show but if you google a polish um, I don't know how they called how they called um, yeah like Easter eggs polish Easter eggs something like that they have a lot of um, beautiful inspirations made with this kind of tool they are very you will actually you will see this one when we paint them, you will see how it looks. I will show you which one were made with which tools. Yeah, this one also works nicely today. It takes a lot of practice, so I usually uh, do eggs twice, and like around Easter. The first time I try new things, just see which patterns and what works better. And then the second time I actually show them to people because yeah, it takes uh, practice, it takes you forget stuff and during the year and yeah. It's nice to refresh. We need more Easter's during the year. Oh, nice. Can 
you see it? This one? Yeah, the star-like um, flowers. Really nice, delicate. The thing is, this is with this tiny pin, the tiny little pin. The, also like a sew, from a sewing kit, I think. Okay. Fire. I oh, actually, I'm gonna set up the, um, the dyeing buff. And um, and then I come back and paint while while they are cooking. That's I think is a good idea. So if I make it in advance, this skin soup, I keep it in the fridge because it might go. So, 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 I usually also keep the skins inside. You can take them out, but I do like to keep them inside because then the eggs, they, the skins, they cover the eggs as well, and then they create patterns on their own. So it it gives a bit of a depth to to the dye and to the whole process, I think. So. I'm just gonna put everything inside. You wanna see? Let's try to see. Just gonna put everything inside. You need to make sure that they are covered with water. I'm gonna add some water. But you see, there is a lot of skin. And I see no shame in going to the supermarket or or store and uh, just taking them from from crates where they, they sell onions because anyway that's gonna go to waste and I honestly go to the counter and say I want to pay for it or I buy like one onion and uh, they're usually too nice to, to charge so that's also an option I'm gonna cook this one and we will see how how the thing turned out And you can use this dye for, I don't know, two, three batches and um, that will be okay. Of course, the color will be lighter with every next uh, batch, but okay, I'm gonna put this to on the stove. So this will cook until boiling and then uh, for about seven minutes for like a hard egg. That's usually the best option because they will also stay longer in the fridge and uh, they will give more time for for the dye to set in and the color will be deeper. Show you. I am going to show you, I'm sorry. So that's it. All set. I'm gonna wait until they boil and then set up a timer. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up and take the Take the eggs out and wipe them, uh, wipe the wax off. And by doing that, we're actually um, spreading the wax around the egg and sealing the pores. And that means that the eggs will stay fresh longer because there is extra preservative on top of them. just we just did 
I'm using no uh, paper towels, but you can use like an old, um, I don't know, cotton towel or anything that you don't mind being dyed a little bit. Okay, this is what I meant when I said that the skin will create extra pattern. And in this case, super hot. And you see how the, the pattern here, like the darker elements. So these are the pins. Pins, uh, well, the bigger and the smaller one. And then, uh, no, this is the smaller pin. These flowers are the smaller pin. The one with the tiny hat. And uh, these flowers, I hope you can see them. These are the match with a bit of cotton on, on the top. This is the match. And if you use a cotton swab, this flower will be even bigger. So this is how it turned out. This egg that we did, it's really dark because the, dark, the egg was brown. But yeah, so if you, on a dark egg, if you use a, a bigger tool, like the tool that gives a bigger uh, spot, it will look really nice. Because the smaller ones are the lines are yeah you you lost I, I lost them a lot see here the flower almost disappeared I hope you can see this um, yeah so this is the first one let's see what I made what else I made here okay I'm gonna move it a little bit so you can see oh look at this. These are also the. Can I wipe it? I'm not sure. Okay. Goodbye towel. This is the old one with a bit of stains. So you wipe it out, spread the wax, and remove some onion. And these are also the. This is the big uh, pin, these dots. And this is the tool the, with a the chalk. These are the, the elements that I tried yesterday. Um, what else? Oh, this, this time the, the dye is really dark. Really dark. Look. Really dark. Yeah, everything, yeah, a lot of it is lost but it's still really beautiful. I like it. There's probably a lot of red onions here, like comparing to the yellow ones, but I don't mind it. This, that means actually that I can use it for a few more, look at this, a few more times. That's right. There we go. And then you see like one side is a little bit darker and and some are side is lighter and that's because how they were in the leaves. I should probably take them out given that it's so dark. I, I will till next time. Oh, this one. Oh, I can't see my deer. But I can see the flowers, look at this. The eucalyptus. Nice, right? Beautiful. And the deer has disappeared in the on the other side oh this way so that's the deer beautiful cool so i think there is one more and uh, we are done i know there's two more oh ah, yeah these are the, the trees that i showed you are really nice look this one is nicer um there's also a, a contrast shade here like it's Oh no, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
beautiful thing. I like this one. I really love this one. And the last one. Uh, wow, they're really bright. Let's cut this food. an experiment you always you don't know what you're gonna get um, but some really turned out nicely like this one I really like this one so I guess that's it thank you everyone for joining um, I hope you learned something useful and um, yeah take care have a nice holiday and uh, See you maybe soon. <laughs> yeah. Bye guys. Thanks for joining.